Tell me what you see when you look at me. Do you see another brother lost in these streets looking for his soul? Trying to find my soul. Or do you see another brother searching for lost souls in these streets? A street soldier. A street soldier. Here to help you get that chip off your shoulder, warm your colder days, and sober your drunken ways, and find a way to help you get over these hurdles placed in our path. Yeah. And this is not meant to amuse you. This is for all those who have questions but are afraid to ask. I won't be afraid. I won't be afraid. Times get hard, you lose your way. Open your mind and hear what I say. This is a message for the hard and the soft. To those who tune in weekly and to those who keep an eye out for 8 p.m. on Sundays and turn their radios off. The truth hurts. The cloth has been pulled. We're walking around half dead. Use this show as your IV. Alive and free is a new movement. We've achieved self-destruction. A street soldier promotes self-improvement. Streets couldn't be no colder. So I gotta be a soldier. It shouldn't be this hard for me. Even when it seems so hopeless, I gotta keep my focus. I'm glad to be alive and free, yeah. Streets couldn't be no colder. So I gotta be a soldier. It shouldn't be this hard for me. Even when it seems so hopeless, I gotta keep my focus. I'm glad to be alive and free, yeah. Our first the staff. Dr. Judy May, is Judy here? Judy here? There she is! What's up, Judy? Hey, thank What's you up, for Judy? inviting us. What's up? What's up? She is board secretary and program coordinator. Uh, Umoja, how do you say that? Sako? Is that how you say it? Yes, that's our oh. ARC program. Okay. Uh, I was going to say it wrong. So I'm here. Learning community at America River College. And Jerry Marshall. Umoja Community College Foundation Board Vice President and Instructor Umoja Saku Learning Center at American River College. Those are the staff that have joined us to explain all about Umoja. And then we have some young people who have benefited from Umo uh, Umoja. And I'm going to say your name, John, so you guys correct me. <laughs> okay, Cameron Sims. Where's Cameron? Hello. What's up, man? What's up? <laughs> Tyari Love? Um, Tyari White. Oh, Tyari White. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Is Denzel here? Denzel Phoenix? I'm here, brother. I'm here. Oh, there you are. Oh, man, nice hat, man. Really? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. You can give it away. I mean, I, I like hats, too. Okay. Um, Ramelia Turner? Oh. Hi, Ramelia. And J.P. Waife. I got it right. It's, okay. Uh, we offy. Wait, we offy. Yes, sir. <laughs> Sometimes this degree don't. Mean... Sometimes this, right. this, this doctorate don't mean nothing. <laughs> all right, all right. Thank you for joining us tonight. We want to give some love to the Emoja program, and we're going to jump right into it. I dug some stuff up. I've known about Emoja for a long time through my. By the way, that's my brother, y'all. That's my baby brother. My baby brother. Okay. Say something, Jerry. Let me see if you sound like me. You got to unmute. You're muted. All, all this tech, all this technology, I had on mute. But uh, yeah, we do have the same genes, and sometimes people say we sound alike. And if they say you sound just like Dr. Marshall, I say, yeah, I am Dr. Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, I play off him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Emoja was, I'm going to read this. Emoja promotes student success and improve lifetime outcomes for all students through a curriculum that is responsive to the legacy of the African and African American diasporas. It is a community of educators and learners committed to the academic success, personal growth, and self actualization of African American and other students. And it is primarily in community colleges. In fact, I had no idea it was this many community college. Really, I got this, this map and there's region one, region two, region two, region three, region four, region five, region six, and actually uh, also at Cal State East Bay, Highline College and the University of California, Riverside. This thing is extensive. 
um, I'm not going to even try to read all the community colleges that, that the, the program is at. Uh, and what I thought was more remarkable, it's only 14 years old, 15 years old. It started in 2006. So Judy and Jerry, tell us what it's all about. Y'all you... got the flow of the floor. I'm sorry. I got Judy, you want to give, give me a little history and I'll jump in with my, my story. Yes. So um, we consider Emoja uh, a, a grassroots organization. And so let me um, explain that. So the Umoja Community Education Foundation is now an incorporated 501c3, just like you. Mm. And it comes under the California Community College Chancellor's Office, and we are funded by the state. Now, oh, that's cool. We, but we existed for a long, long time without <laughs> state money. With no money. We did not get funding until 2015. And so it was like, uh, well, myself, Jerry Marshall, Dr. Teresa Aldridge, Tom DeWitt, Donna, Dr. Donna Calandros. These are, you know, some of the founders who, uh, you know, helped start this organization and move it, you know, help it to grow to what it is today. So now we're a, a nonprofit coming under our California Community College Chancellor's Office with funding and even, you know, able to provide some resources uh, to our over 60 programs that are in the community college system. And um, wow. We, it's a yeah. big operation. Six, 60 yeah. programs plus we're in a, a UC. And when you say Highline College, that's in the state of Washington. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Now, and something interesting about that program is, you know, they when we were getting started, we were attending all sorts of conferences to get our, our platform and our, our idea, you know, our program model um, out there. And so they were at a conference and heard about what we're doing. And they're like, we need this at our college. Yes, because so, and so there's but a did, did, Let me just ask you, I want to go back to the beginning. Whose idea was this? I mean, you know, I always love when people come up with an idea, right? I want to have an emotion program at a community college and, and it's going to work, right? I mean, yeah. you want who, to tell that? How long, how long are you with Jerry's okay. program? Basically, it was just a group of educators that said they were sick and tired of being sick and tired with what with the success rate that was happening for African American students in the com community college system. So okay. they held a DVC in 2006 and the Moja conference and invited 15 programs that were having uh, having programs working with African American students just to come together and share their ideas. So we all got together at DVC. Uh, I was at American River College. I decided, you know, I was just tired of working at the, the day. So I just wanted a day off, but I went <laughs> to the conference, right? And we went to the conference and you saw all these 15 programs doing such dynamic work with African-American students. And mm. afterwards they put out a list and said, we need to continue this, put your name down on the list. And I said, oh, that sounds like work. I didn't put my name on the list, but <laughs> someone put my name on the list. And so, from that list, we formed a little steering community, went to uh, a workshop in was, was, was Westerbeek. Westerbeek, right? <laughs> went to Westerbeek, did a little workshop, and that's when we start to uh, craft our, our, our yeah. emotional practices, our mission you, statement, our vision statements. It yes. wasn't a little workshop. It was three days of <laughs> meeting and working and you know minds coming together around this concept of let's create a statewide model of a retention and success program to help more black students get through community college so that was the intent yeah. and so out of that came this model and then you know and we had no money no right? money so, <laughs> I, I, I understand that i understand <laughs> But we did have no money. <laughs> we did. We wanted to be intentional and deliberate about the community that we were serving, and that was our driving force. How can we help these young people? Yes, wow. and uh, and we had 
We had people who, who began to back us though. We created a consortium of uh, California community colleges uh, and we convinced several presidents or chancellors out there to you know, give us $1,000 a year. And that was like our seed money to travel. And so we held- like, And to put on our conference and to put on our regionals <laughs> and to put on our <laughs> professional development conferences for well, faculty. Y'all look, 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 some straight out entrepreneurs. I mean, you basically started a business. <laughs> yes, you, yes. You started a business. And, and, and you had to get the funding and you had to keep it going. And you've taken the business to the point where now, you know, they're in the budget, which is it's a, yes. it's a remarkable story. I mean, I, I, I didn't, I knew it kind of, but I didn't know this coming from a little thing to this big thing and then saying, yeah, y'all give us some money because now we're so part of the community college system that, and I saw some numbers. I, I saw some 2 million and 1 million numbers. I was, I was afraid to say anything because maybe I was reading the wrong numbers. <laughs> Yes, our uh, contribution from the state is 2.5 million. 2.5 million, you know. Yeah, and that supports <laughs> our statewide office. We have a statewide office here in uh, Sacramento and an executive director, Mrs. Nzinga Dugas, and, you know, a staff of regional coordinators who provide support and direction and guidance to the programs that are, you know, campus-based. So it's really a... A wonderful operation, I think. It's a big deal, really. Yes. <laughs> it's a big deal. I mean, it ain't a little deal. It's a big deal. Um, mm -hmm. So congratulations. Congratulations for making, you know, it's a 2021. Congratulations for getting the funding. The future is bright. And the impact you have on the young people is what it's all about, right? This is what it's all about. So we saw, uh, the, video, we saw the video earlier with young people talking about uh, the impact the program has had on them. And then we invited some some uh well some... Doc, dr marshall let me clarify you know california community colleges you can come at at any age so sometimes right. we impact people who are not so young but nevertheless we have That's an right. impact on their That's... lives and it's all good <laughs> i'll change that to people <laughs> <laughs> so so let's hear from yeah, and JP said he got a big exam. You know, he said you got a big exam tomorrow. He can't hang around for long. So uh, if you want to study, we got to get him in there <laughs> first. So JP, why don't you tell us your you mode your study and you know everything from the school you go to, the experience you've had, and so on and so forth. And thank you for spending time with us this evening. Yes. JP, uh, well, thank you, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. Um, I started out at Fullerton College, that's in uh, Orange County, uh, right in the center, right next to Anaheim. And, um, you know, it was, it was so strange, just how I, how I even heard about Emoja, how I got involved with Emoja, and where I am today. You know, mm. um, I mean, everything, I, in hindsight, it just, it, it was like, it was kind of just ordered, like that's, that's how it was meant to go, how it was meant to be. And so I remember um, I was actually at the time that I first stepped on uh, to Fullerton College campus, I was still in high school and I was in this program that uh, called like dual enrollment. And so I was just taking like a real simple counseling class. Um, but uh, a man by the name of uh, Dr. Ernest Bridges, he, yeah. he, he kind of just like saw me sitting by myself and he was like, hello, young man, you know, have you heard about Umoja? Uh, and I was like, no, nice. Umoja, what's, what's that? And, you know, he, he didn't leave me alone just with the word Umoja. Like he, he said, well, you know, come along with me and I'll walk you there. And he walked me there and, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't leave, you know, cause mm -hmm. it was this, it was the first time for me, especially growing up in a uh, education system like this, that I've ever been in a black space period that wasn't inside my home. And so, just go in and I mean it's it's really like a, a wow you know you just see everybody <laughs> everybody's black the staff is black the students are black you know you got uh, uh red black and green flags all over the place and I'm just <laughs> like wow <laughs> you know <laughs> so um uh, yeah you know I was I was really young at that time so um I just I, I really wanted to make a new home for myself you know because mm. 
I didn't really feel connected to the campus. And so I figured, why not? Why don't I start with the Moja? And that has been nothing short of a blessing for me. Um, at the time that I stepped into a Moja, I actually was nowhere near a leader. You know, I was shy. I didn't have a voice. Um, I didn't, you know, I, I wasn't socially conscious. I wasn't uh, a reader. I wasn't on top of my grades. You know, I, I, I mean, it's just so funny, um, but yet so right how much Moja has changed my life. And so, you know, just being there, I think I've been there a total of about, I want to say three years. Uh, and I just recently transferred to UC Riverside. And, you know, during my time at, uh, that's right, uh, Go Highlanders, uh, you know, during my time at, at Fullerton College, Umoja, um, I was still in Umoja, the program itself, um, in a little bit of a backstory. There was a, a student by the name of Lorenzo, I'm forgetting his last name, um, but there was an incident uh, with him and our uh, campus police. And, you know, it was actually a real unfortunate situation where he was actually slammed to the ground right outside of the emoji room. And, you know, he was uh, put in cuffs and, you know, the, they, they had called police on him. And I kind of saw the whole thing unfold, um, not, you know, face to face, but I kind of saw like the aftermath. And I, that man, Lorenzo, I had seen him, you know, we shook hands, we had had some conversations and just for something like that to happen, was such a shock to me, right? And so that really shifted something within my heart. So mm. I wanna wanna do something, wanna do not not just be okay with what's going on. You know, if there's something wrong, you gotta speak about it. You gotta you you gotta say something. You know. So that look look, I can let you go on <laughs> uh, because obviously the program has touched your heart. I hope you don't have to go right away because I'd like to get a round table going with every all of you. So just thank you for that. Uh, wow. I mean, I'm I'm that's all I can say is that's unbelievable. Yes, sir. Romelia. Your turn. Hi. Hi. Hey, Miss Turner. I, oh, I heard I'm a little delayed. Um, uh, so um, I can resonate with what he said about, you know, um, well, for me, it was just full circle. Like I was a student coming in. Um, I was going to um, continuing ed and um, I got this scholarship called Promise Scholarship where, you know, community college would be for free. And I really wasn't a student. I was struggling mother um, who had dropped out of school um, at 18. And yes, I'm the non-traditional student who was in her 40s going back to school to get her high school diploma because she dropped out and she, you know, was um, just kind of getting back into the workforce, didn't have a high school diploma and was like, where am I gonna go from here? Like I was a um, retired hairstylist, right? So. Hmm. I'm just going back to get my high school diploma. That was just, that was the bottom line for me. High school diploma was the end all be all. So um, I got this scholarship, uh, the Promise Scholarship for Free College. So I go in and my Promise um, um, counselor was actually um, officed with Erin Charlins. And she is the coordinator of Emotion at San Diego City College. And that um, was, you know, how... For me, it was emotion was birthed in me. And so I met with Aaron and um, coming in, he said, um, you know, he no, uh, he was not a leader. I was not a student really coming in. I was a mama, you know, mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. to have two adult mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. I came in as a mama, you know. And so um, I ended up being the president of the emotion club. And I was kind of familiar with how to think, you know, how to order things, put things in order. I knew how to do that wait, kind wait. of thing. Wait, wait, being the president, mom became the, the president. president. They nominated, they all said her. <laughs> and so I was like, come my babies. Yes, chosen. I was like, come my babies. Yes, come, come. And we're gonna do this. And this is what we're gonna do. And you're gonna do this and I'm gonna do, and we just organized. And it was a time when Donald Trump was kind of, um, I came in at two, in 2016, so he was just elected. So a lot of things were happening. So we were organizing, you know, walkouts and speakouts and 
different things that we were able to do at that time to come together, you know, um, to show solidarity. Um, there was just a lot going on. And so um, this was the first time that I really kind of started focusing on what I wanted to, to do and, and how I wanted to move and, and how I could be of service. Mm, mm. That's wonderful. My people into, my, into myself. Oh, that's... And so, wow. Um, I'm not I'll... even, yeah. And that just like really just kind of scratches the surface of how I'm, you know, got in, involved in Emoja. Like, started getting scholarship after scholarships and nominations for sitting along and being under um, these two amazing people right here. Um, I was a student sitting on the board of um, the Emoja Foundation. So, I was I was lucky to to actually have an actual tool belt to work from today. And right behind me, I have like my two degrees and certificates and an, another scholarship to another university where I'm a student. As of tomorrow, I'm working on my senior project, working on my bachelor's. I'm an actual Good. student Good. today. Good. <laughs> Y'all just blowing back history month up, Lord. And, and never could have done it without Emoja, ever. That says it all. That says it all. Thank you. Wow. Okay, Denzel, you got it. Like, you know, you got the greatest name in the world. You know that, right? You know, he's my hero. See, he's a hero. He, he, he's my hero. He's, I actually met him, but that's a whole nother story. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, so for me, Emoja is like, the best way to describe Emoja is my North Star, right? So for, for me, it was like from elementary to high school, they put me on an IEP. So I went through school through special ed. And when I got to ARC, American River College in 2012, I was that student that was just trying to chase money. So I went and I was like, I want to become a radiologist because they make half a million dollars. Then I said, I want to go into computer programming because that's popular right now. And then in 20, I think it was in 2018, I met the president of the Emoja Club, Gerald Chaston. And he said, hey, do uh, you want to, you, have you ever heard of Emoja? And I've been at the school for a while and never heard of Emoja. Mm. And when I went to the, uh, the information session, I met Miss Kim. And then I went to another session, I met Dr. Mays. And then when I went to the village time, and we all came to community. I learned about my history, come, taking African-American history class in college. That was the first time I ever learned about my history. And when I went there, it was like they validated my presence. Originally, it was like I was invisible, right? I just walked around as this black guy, but Jesus. I was just the black guy. But when I went there, I was Denzel. And not Denzel Washington, but Denzel Phoenix. <laughs> who I was as a person and they looked for who I truly was. Not the, not, oh, well, you can go play football because of your size, but more so like, who are you? What's your interest? Who, who are you as a person? So mm -hmm. when I went to uh, the Emoja conference, my very first Emoja conference, and I, I seen people that I watched on television, like Dr. DeGroy, who was a keynote speaker during that conference in Riverside. And I seen I was inspired by all of these black people coming together, dressed the professional. They held themselves to a standard that America tries to make, act like doesn't exist. And Emoja put that on the forefront. They showed us that we can be more than who we are. And that's why I say they're, our, they're my North Star because even with Harriet Tubman, it was like, we're more than, than being enslaved Africans. And I'm gonna show you that we're more. And that's, that's why, it was like the Underground Railroad. They, they pulled the black students who were lost on that campus and said, we're gonna show you how to be more. And we're gonna hold you to that standard to be more. And after doing that, I went through multiple conferences and ups and downs, and they've been there the whole time from count. That says a lot. See, that really says a lot. They've been there the whole time. That's it amazing. Was, yeah, it's, it, it's a blessing. It's a blessing, you know. Yeah, thank you, sir. Woo, Lord, I'm gonna have to go get my, uh, you know, my handkerchief. Y'all was, was bringing it. <laughs> Sayori, your turn. Um, 
this is my second year in community college. I want to say originally I wasn't supposed to be in a community college. Um, I didn't, I intended on going to an HBC right out of high school. Um, and I was set up to go to an HBC right out of high school, but unfortunately events happened and I wasn't able to get the funding to go. So my next option was community college. And I went on my first day, when I was going to register for classes, I didn't think that, I didn't know anything about Umoja. I didn't know if it was a thing. I was just like, I wanna go to this school. I wanna do my two years, I wanna get out. Um, and one of the counselors walked up to me and was like, have you like, are you enrolled into classes? And I was like, no, I just wanna get in, get out. And they were like, well, I think, you know, the Umoja program will be good for you. Um, and I was like, okay, like, and then they, they they sold me on like being able to get my English one and four done in one semester. And I was like, okay, I can get two years of work done in one semester, I'm in. Like, and she like, she was just like, yeah, they have amazing teachers, they're they're all supportive, they all want to see you succeed. My first day in Umoja, I go to Chabot, actually. So I had Duet. Um and he, yes I love him he was he told us he like he was so he's so real and he's so like he gonna tell you exactly how it is and like it is gonna be true and so he was just like I just want you guys to know like you guys might get into a lot of arguments in this class but it's all here to help you guys to build and that whole entire semester it wasn't really arguments because we were just debating within each other having conversations and seeing where everyone was and getting information from everybody else on you know their their look on you know african-american history and that's what kind of like brought it in and brought it like sold it for me i was just like this class is like we're a family we're a community and they don't strive less for nothing than us you know being great and they put us in the position to you know failing was never an option we were stuck in study hall for hours at a time we would leave class and be like, okay, we're going to study hall and be there until it opened and it closed. And, and we would, you know, our teachers wasn't settling for us, you know, not getting an A. Like if you didn't get an A in that class, you weren't paying attention or you just wasn't showing up like you should have been, but they were still gonna work with you to make sure that you, you know, pass that class with flying colors. And I do appreciate that. Um, and this is my second year. My first year was amazing. And we were able to craft a black student leadership class. Um, and that kind of, that took off in just emoji in general, which, you know, helped us now create our black, black cultural resource center that is um, through Umoja, um on our campus, which is one of the first. And we were put in positions to, you know, talk with deans and chancellors of our college, you know, just to get the Umoja program, you know, up and up, the emoji, but the BCRC up and running, which was beyond, you know, anything I could ask for. I always knew that I had some type of leadership qualities in me. I just didn't know what exactly they were until yeah. it, it was brought out of me. Yeah. Um, but they're, we're still, so, they're still so supportive. I talked to DeWitt and Tommy all the time. They're, they're always there if they need, if we have a, some miscommunications or under, not understanding something with our classes. They're, try, they're there to figure us out. They're pointing us to the right directions, to the right teachers to talk to, to get the help that we need because failing is not an option for them. And they're here to, they're always there to, you know, just make sure that they implement that um, throughout our years and to get us in and out as soon as possible so that we're not here as long as, longer than we have to be. Um, wow. But yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay, camera. <laughs> wow. <laughs> These stories are amazing. Um, yeah, so I went to Chabot College also. Um, I was classmates with Tari, um, so I have a similar story. Um, well, I, went, I wasn't the best student in high school, um, so I wasn't really too eager to go to college, but um, I went and um, my coworker actually recommended me for the Mojo program. So. I went to college and my initial thoughts were, I'm gonna get in and get out and transfer. I'm not gonna do any extras. I'm gonna handle my business, get in and get out. And I went to sign for the Mojo program and I was I had tunnel vision. I was focused on getting the right classes and getting out. Um, when I went to my first class, I had Tom DeWitt and uh, Miss Williams as my 
instructors for the course. And on the syllabus paper, they had a Toni Morrison quote. And I'm summarizing the quote, but they said, it said for the most part, um, when you get to these jobs in these positions, it's your responsibility to free someone else. Um, it's not a grab bag candy game. If so pretty much like, um, I interpreted that as if I succeed, it's my responsibility to pick someone else with me. Um, that quote meant to me, that's what I'm supposed to do, but also I have the ability to make it. Um, so um, further down the line, I had a summer path as Tari. Um, we had the same English class and I was in the, the leadership class with her. Um, I was a part of the process in making the um, Black Culture Resource Center at Chabot College. Um, my passion was fueled through that quote. Um, a lot of what I do now is fueled through that quote. And um, yeah, that's my Chabot story. That's my right. Chabot story. Thank all of you for sharing sharing your stories. So, some I just thought of something. You, you guys helped me and you know, Judy and Jerry do the same. Why do why why did why did community colleges get a bad rap? I, I just have never really understood that. I've heard people say, like it's a step down, you know, and 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 this, can y'all help me with that? I just thought it was like, you know, now, now again, you know, I went straight to university, but somebody just help me with that because there were a lot of benefits. Let me just say what the main benefit is to me. Community, well, you gotta borrow colleges, money. <laughs> community colleges are hidden gems, really, uh, it's truly what okay. they are. I went to community college and I found that experience to be much more enriching and empowering than my university experience. Wow. So it is, it is truly what you make it because they are open access public institutions. Um, you know, anyone can enroll. There are no selective admission criteria. And so people can get lost there if they don't come with goals and direction or, you know, tap into the resources that are available to them, then they'll, they'll flounder, right? Yeah. It does, it, it does allow that. And, you know, they're, they can, <laughs> we're now like our latest initiative is guided pathways so that, you know, when students come in, we put them on a path and they stay on the straight and narrow and, you know, follow that path. So, so that we can sort of get rid of that, uh, that thought where, what, why do people come to community college and stay there forever? But um, yeah, so because they're open access institutions, they're there to serve multiple needs in communities throughout California. So that's why they get a bad rap, but I think it's a smart decision for students to come out of high school and then go enroll in community college is saves just so much money. And you're taking, and it gives you time to really decide what you're doing or what you wanna do at that next level before you get there. So a lot of maturation has, you know, can set in <laughs> during that time when you're there. Any of you want to comment on that? I mean, did you think that before you went there? Did you say, I'm not going to a four year school, that was a step down. I mean, what was your, your, your thought? And Jerry, you can jump in too. Cause I, I've heard, I've had young people tell me that, you know, cause we have young people go to college and like, I ain't going to community college. It's like, I mean, I, I, so. Right. Yeah, actually I, I did think that cause I was such a, a really good student in high school. I was a 3.5, 4.0 student in high school. So I was like, there shouldn't be no reason why I'm not going to a university. Um, and I used to feel bad because it's like, why are all, everybody around me who's, you know, doing well in school and going to these universities or going to these universities and not having a problem, but now I'm sitting here and I have to go to this downgrade of mm -hmm. a school and, you know, and suffice that maybe I don't have the, I'm not getting the right education that I'm going to get at a university, but I personally feel that I have, I've gotten more, a better education at a community college than I could have ever gotten out of out of four year it, the classes are a lot smaller it's more one-on-one -on -one, like togetherness than it is in a university when you could be in a class full of 100 students and you'll never talk to your your professor unless you 
figure out a way to talk to them or come in during their office hours. And even then there's still 20, 30 kids who, who want to come in, but in a community college, there's 20, 30 kids just in that class, you know, and the teacher has that time to be one-on-one and be thorough. But yeah, I honestly thought I was like, yeah, if I go to, if I go to this community college, I'm gonna get talked about because there should be no reason why I'm in a community college. And I got these grades like this and I was on honor roll every single semester and and I'm going to community college. But then once I got here, I was like, I made the best decision of my life. If I would have went to community college, if I would have went to a university, I probably would have dropped out or I wouldn't have done as well as I'm doing now. So, yeah. And truthfully, I mean, I'm um, curious. I mean, is, is anybody? High I'm also school eight, counselors I'm give us a bad rap. High school yeah, counselors well. want all their students to get accepted to four-year universities so they can boast about the number. And that's what I was going to say. Generally, they don't. They, the identity is always with four-year institutions. You can go to a four-year institutions, UC, CSUs. They almost set up a hierarchy for students in, within their minds of what they believe is the higher, uh, the system of education. UCs, CSUs, and the community college is always your last result. Right. So they don't really play up community college, but community college is the gateway for most black students to get to the four year institutions. So we recognize it there. And that's why we have these emoji programs, because we have to be like Denzel said, that North Star. We have to be able to put you on the right path to the right classes. And we have to validate who you are as a black student in these systems, systems that weren't necessarily designed for you. Right. And that's what we do. We provide that. We provide, we provide that love. We make it intentional. We make it in de deliberate. We validate who you are. We tell you what you see is true. Right. And then we let you navigate yourselves. We, we, we even instill radical imagination. Imagine yourself wherever you want to go and you can do it. And help our students also recognize, oh, their also unique gifts, talents, and abilities. and abilities. That's something we pride ourselves in. Ooh, that's what they said. <laughs> right. Still, you want to say something? I also hear that you set high standards and that you don't take no for an answer and you will not allow them to be unworthy. And so I just want to go back and acknowledge and to recognize each of you and what you've said, the North Star and, and JP. I mean, the fact that you began with an idea about yourself and then you discovered the truth about yourselves and how it awakened you and allowed you to be who you were created to be, that your gifts and your abilities, your talents to come through and you can see the reason for what you're doing for the right reasons, not just for getting money, but to serve. You've tapped into your highest self because this program has allowed that to, to unfold for you. And I just need to acknowledge, to recognize and acknowledge that you said that, that you did that, that you did the work and that you kept doing, that you let yourself be the leader. Even though you say I'm the mama, you are born to lead. It's easy because you just can't help it. You know what I'm saying? You got the gifts, you've got the abilities. And then when you get in touch, what is it that they say? When a student is ready, that the teacher, teacher. will appear. <laughs> and the teacher doesn't always come just to make it easy. The teacher comes to let you know, this is what you got to do. This is what you gonna do. And you're gonna do it well. And we ain't leaving. And what did Tayari say? And you ain't leaving until you get it right. <laughs> and so I, I just, I think that's just remarkable and wonderful. And I, like Dr. Marshall, I'm about ready to get some Kleenex. But my Kleenex is right here. I'm like, now, Lord, I may not be able to say anything. This is wonderful. And I just salute all of you who did the work to make this happen and that you're touching these young people and you're waking them up to see the gift and the beauty that they were created to be black, brilliant, beautiful. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Anytime awesome. she speaks, we have to have a long pause because you really can't say nothing. You just have to like <laughs> settle on. She does this all the time. I mean, you would be like, drop the mic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, 
I'm big on young people, people, several young people, financing college. Um, I forgot I'm, to say, I'm, or too I many community college. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey. Did. Yes, in Kansas, in Kansas, yes, you did. Um, the, you know, and, and, and I'm always advising young people and, you know, they can go where they want to go, but I make them do the numbers. I really do. You know, they actually have to cost out no matter where they're going. And Leia Sale knows this, their education for four years. And, and you know, we, we, you know, we, we do scholarships for the young people that come to the program. And if they can't make the numbers work, I tell them, I'm not going to give them my money. I'm, I'm really not. I'm not going to do it unless the numbers will work. Um, and in the past, a lot of young people have gone to, <laughs> I mean, early on, they said, I want to go to Atlanta. Atlanta. Everybody want to go to Atlanta. I want to go to Atlanta. 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 You know, you know, Atlanta. 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 Uh, or they would look at uh, a place or they would look at, um, you know, the major. But rarely did they consider finance. And, you know, a lot of them would get in there and have to drop out because money issues, right? Um, so we've been able to, to, to close the loop on that. The best way to finance your education I've seen is to go to community college and then go to, you can go where you want after that. But, uh, you know, state institutions, they'll actually pay you to go to school. I had a girl that went from City College to Cal State and they paid her to go to school. <laughs> I'll never forget that. And that was one of the I'll rare bet. times that I saw that. They paid her to go to school. You know, she was getting checks back and Pell Grants and this kind of grant and so on and so forth. Now, she could have gone to Morehouse or Georgetown or any place. But uh, I just, you know, I, you got to be cognizant of that because, you know, when you get older, start the family, and, you know, you owe $25,000 to the United States government. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's something night. I just want young people to go in with their eyes wide open. And and uh and I love what you said, Judy. It, it is a it is a hidden gem. It is a hidden gem. It is a hidden gem. And I read somewhere, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you're that community college graduates are guaranteed interest into HBCUs. Is that is that true? Oh, that's HBCU. our now Transfer that's agreement. that. Emoja got is is the impetus behind that program. So that is actually a program that uh, is a partnership between the California Community College Chancellor's Office and 39 HBCUs. So the Chancellor's Office does have an interest in you know providing education to all citizens of California. And if black students aren't getting into UCs and CSUs, they want them to have another pathway to that four-year degree. So they established a partnership sure. with HBCUs. When it initially started, there were only nine, nine. in 2015. Nine. And it's grown. So more community, so more H more HC, HBCUs are joining this uh, partnership where a student can take either 30 units and have a 2.5 GPA, and then they're guaranteed admission to those 39 HBCUs. Guaranteed. If, guaranteed admission. If they complete the associate um, degree. A, soci a transfer degree, and then they're, they're guaranteed admission with the transfer degree also, and the 2.5 GPA. So yeah. Now there's, <laughs> yes. And we have a, a program here that project has staff to help support that matriculation to the HBCU. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Does everybody really get that? Like, you know, if I go here for two years, get my AA, then I could I'm automatically could get into 39 different HBCUs and the list will probably grow, you know, maybe more houses on there, but there's a lot of a lot of wonderful schools that mm -hmm. you can get that black experience, you know, I mean, you know, there's, wow. That I, and I saw that, but I really didn't know it. And, and you know, hats off to you guys for making that happen. I mean, really, that's, yes. that is. Yes, one of our founders is a, Moore. <laughs> is a Howard graduate, graduate. Lane Moore. And uh, she, she had been beating the bushes for years as, you know, we were starting Emoja with, you know, taking tours, taking students on HBCU tours and 
you know, doing articulation with them. And she got this project off the ground. So it's, you know, really her brainchild. And she's part of Emoja, but the, the transfer guarantee project is not, uh, you know, officially part of Emoja. They're a partner with us, but the chancellor's office uh, entered that agreement. I want to ask each of the, 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 the I sometimes used to say young people. I don't want to just say people. <laughs> um, and I'm going to ask you personally what, what, you, what lies in your future, but, but um, what are the challenges that folks face when they walk on? And you've talked about it because after you, what, what are the challenges that they face when they walk onto a community college campus uh, that you see they need? They, they, they need help with. And you probably said this in your own, you know, in your own stories, but uh, I mean, I'm used to asking young people, you know, what are the challenges they see in schools and so on and so forth. Um, but what do you see that the challenges are for a group on a community college campus? When y'all got an answer? <laughs> yes, I can go. All right. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. So, um, well, San Diego City College was located downtown San Diego. And first of all, um, let me say the parking was not so good, not so mm -hmm. great, um, especially for me, like first, like um, first day, not really knowing what to do, um, new student. Um, I, I used to park on the street, you know, um, so parking, you have to get there early. You, I mean, you got to be ready you know, and so um, getting there early, um, you just every single day, you have to get there early. Um, mm -hmm. Not knowing people and not knowing where to go, um, th that's a challenge. Time management, mm -hmm. that's, that's the biggest thing. If you're not really managing your time right, um, mm -hmm. that's a challenge. And, you know, for, you know if, you're not, if you're going to community college, if you're going to school, period, manage. Mm -hmm time correctly as far as you know getting your work done on time managing your personal life your school life your work life that is going to be the key to your success jp you wanted to say something i just wanted to say i think some of the challenges at large um is just you know in, in my time of being a moja student i've seen so many uh, especially black young men, just not consistent with school. They'll take a semester mm -hmm. off, you know, whether it's because of financial reasons, um, you know, sometimes people don't don't really recognize, like, whether you, you're in school or you have a job, it's still an investment, right? And so you don't see the fruits of your labor when you're taking four courses during the spring semester, right? But you see the fruits of your labor when you go work for a McDonald's and you get the check every two weeks, and so people will quickly fall in love with the money, but they don't <laughs> fall in love with the education, you know? And so I think the, the biggest challenge and uh, the hurdle that we all gotta, um, you know, work towards is just recognizing that, you know, there's bigger goals ahead. And as much as, you know, there are challenges that you have now, you really gotta push through and, and, and find that ticket that's gonna feed your family later on, not just what's gonna help you out right now. You know, so that's that's a big challenge that I see, um, you know, a, a lot, a lot, you know, and I've been in a, a lot of spaces, too. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not just um, like on, on my campus, you know, I've seen it a lot. I'm, I'm also or I was formerly a, an amend president, which is African-American Males Education Network and Development. And I've seen a lot, you know, and so it, it really hurts to see uh, both my brothers and sisters just just drop out or you know just not they don't they don't really see the 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 reason or the need you know uh, but it really is a, a a fortunate thing just to be enrolled in school period got it well said uh denzel you want to say something go ahead jump on that one uh for me it was after you get the financial aid and you pay for your classes and you're in the classes one of the things I seen was at the beginning of each class, they tell some history about how this white person invented this thing that is the curriculum and how that never reflected the black students sitting in the class that felt alienated from the curriculum in the classroom. 
So it was being able to see yourself within the work that you're putting in within these subjects and topics that you're learning. So like when we would go back to village time and we would say, I can't do this math, Mr. Marshall would tell us, well, who invented it? <laughs> and we would know it was our ancestors that invented that math. And then when we went back to that math class, we would think about what he said and we would see ourselves in those subjects and topics, which motivated us to be like, if my ancestors can do it, I can do it too. Wow. Cameron and Tiara, you want to add anything? Challenges on the campus? Um, kind of just picking off what Denzel said. I think just not knowing or seeing people around you or getting the curriculum that of people who look like you and who were you um, and not knowing that that support is around that campus. Like, I feel like if I wasn't in Umoja, I wouldn't have known that all these different things are, are supportive within, you know, my community. Um, and not seeing, not seeing a lot of people talk about the community college system, like it's a great thing or giving it the praise that it deserves because it's, it, it is a great thing. And it is something that can lead you to a different path that you might not be able to go on if you're at a university or give you the opportunities that you might not get if you're in a university because there's thousands of students compared to, you know, maybe 2,000 Black students or 2,000, 4,000 students at a community college. It's, it's just a different ratio. So you're not going to always, you're not going to get the same experience at a community college that you're going to get at a, at a university ever because there's two different playing fields. Cameron, you have anything to add? We can't hear you. Cameron, you're on mute. We can't hear you. He's not on mute. Yeah, I'm muted, but we can't hear him. Right. It may be turned down. Your volume we may be turned down. Try it again. Hello? Yeah. There you go. Okay. Um, I think that the biggest thing is understanding that it's a marathon. Um, with community college in particular, you don't see the instant success. Um, and then you look at your friends at the university and uh, they're, you see like the nice campuses, the parties, the whole uh, sororities, for fraternities, all that going on. And um, I, I was just having this conversation with my mom the other day. It's like, I'm working the job. I'm going to school every day. And I'm not, I'm not feeling like I'm being successful yet because my, I have like a two-year plan. And before I get the, the university um, accolade by my name, and um, it's just that going every day, working every day um, to get to that end point. I think that's the hardest thing. But keep doing it. And yeah. that yes. is the biggest Stay challenge. Stay the course. Because yeah. our, our colleges are in your local community and it allows you to work and go to school. Most students do make that choice, but keep your eye on the prize because you will get there and you'll, you'll get, get to there. that next level. And, and you won't have to, you'll find that you won't have to work as hard <laughs> when you get to the university level, trust me. And it's funny because right after I had that conversation with my mom, like the next day, my acceptance letters started coming in. So, <laughs> <laughs> and and that really I think is, I think that's so uh, so important because I think what we do as faculty and staff, and we support the students with their physical, emotional, and spiritual yeah. aspect of who they are, right? Yeah. So that is so critical for for students to know. And to know that they're loved and they know that they're supported and there is light at the end of the tunnel and we'll walk you through the process. We'll be there with you. You got questions, let's deal with them, right? And just having that there. When I went to community college, well, I guess I had it because I was involved in a program of athletics where I got support. But students who aren't involved in a program, whether it's athletics, EOP, and that, if you just walk on a campus, it's hard to navigate, navigate that campus. That's why Emoja is there. We we grab you. I don't get you sitting on the corner. You sitting on somebody gonna come say, "Come on here, let's go to Emoja," 
we'll pull you up. We have village time. Let's get together as a community. Let's talk about the issues, right? We have 18 different practices where everybody's business is there. We're intentional. We're deliberate. We have this ethic of love. We surround you with all this stuff so that you will be successful. Yes, if I could just add that what we do is um, create a safe space for Black and African American students um, and help them to develop a connection so that they feel a sense of belonging in the community college environment. And we affirm, you know, what they may be thinking, what they may be experiencing. Now there's there's a new there's a term I just recently read about. I, I've always oh. talked about what happens, but there's this term called race lighting. I just saw an article about, and it's where you know you're you're going through something, you know you feel like somebody is being you know racist towards you, but when you talk about it to somebody else who doesn't have that kind of lived experience, they explain it away, right? Or discount it or dismiss it or say, yeah, that's not what they really meant or whatever. And so we know those things happen. And we know students are going to have microaggressions in their classroom environment. Or aggressions, in they're not micro, just aggressions. <laughs> yeah. So we become a place that provides that cultural identity and affirmation, you know, it's like, you're okay, you know, d d <laughs> don't pay attention to what's going on out there, you know, come over here and it, or if we have to go and be uh, an advocate, advocate with you. them with that faculty, we do that. So but we we let them know that they're okay. And they, they got a home with us. Mm -hmm. You know, being black in America is not easy. We all know this thing was set up for us to fail. Uh, the only reason that it has to feel is that we, refu we refuse to lose. I mean, it was just set up that way. I always say, look, that's an old Chuck D. Public Enemy line, okay? Refuse to lose. And, uh, uh, but we, we, we have to help each other get through this insane place. Um, and I, I, emoji, that's what it does. I mean, we have a saying that to hear, you know, with the, the kids we work is, we're not all related, but we're our family, family. And that's exactly what you guys are. You're a family. You're a family. When I hear they're always there, they haven't let me go, they always say, that's what family does. That's what family does. You know, that's, it, it, it is beautiful. I, I, it's a great way to, you know, to wrap up this history month, to showcase this program. I'm glad you guys, they, it's institutionalized with the money. Um, you know, we got to, I, I got to get it out more. We got to get it out more so folks know uh so we'll work on that we'll work on that i mean okay. this this i really really want to thank each of you for coming on tonight and sharing your uh sharing about the program and your emoji story let me ask real quick each of them what your plans in the future are jp what's in your future president of the united states no, well, no i'm not that okay well, <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that would be a dream come true, right? <laughs> um, but right now, my uh, main focus is to become a lawyer. I want to go to law school so bad. And, um, you know, just any way that I can. Initially, I wanted to go straight into, you know, criminal law and support uh, a lot of the fight that really is uh, a thankless job within the criminal justice system. Uh, but right now, I'm kind of weighing my options. I'm kind of looking at uh, corporate real estate because a lot of these Black-owned businesses are really online only. So why not try and dip into that and try and help out a lot of these uh, Black-owned businesses and create our own um, economies, you know? I mean, I, I would really like to see a Black Chinatown one day. So maybe we can call it Harlem Town, right? Or Chicago <laughs> Town, <laughs> Atlanta Town. So... Uh, yeah, those are, uh, you know, I definitely want to get into law, though. So law school is my number one goal. Ramelia? So right now, um, I'm, I'm working for a nonprofit uh, organization uh, called Pillars of the Community. And so, um, you know, they are just kind of, what we do is we kind of help those who have been impacted by the criminal justice system. And so as far as education goes, I'm aiming towards forensic psychology or um, either nonprofit management, kind of um, political 
I don't know, policy, something like that. I'm not sure, which um, I've just got my fingers crossed. My grades are really good. I'm not, you know, I've gotten this far, I've, you know, gotten community college paid for. I've gotten, um, you know, my bachelor's paid for, you know, this was a full ride. And so I'm, fingers crossed, grades good, you know, I don't know. I don't know what's coming my way. I just don't know. Hopefully I can get that far too without having to pay. So I don't know. Hopefully I'm just gonna start writing some scholarships. Hey, I don't know. But when you do good, know. good things come to you. <laughs> yes. Hopefully. So that's that's where I'm at with it. But I'm really in a in a position where um I just wanna, you know, I'm I'm I really have I work for a really good nonprofit right now and just wanna advance there. So Terry. Oh, I'm sorry, now I'm actually a political science major. Um, I plan on transferring not this coming fall, but the following fall um, to TSU um, to just continue in my studies in political science. Um, I do want, I have a Is really big Texas goal. Is that or Texas Southern? Which one? <laughs> Texas Southern. Texas okay. Southern. Okay. Um, I want to eventually become a politician. Um, so I'm gonna study law after my bachelor's, but I wanna be a lawmaker um, in the state capitol. I tell, like, I tell everybody like my goal is to, the only reason, the only way I'm coming back to California because I do currently live in Texas is if I have a office at the state capitol um, as a lawmaker. Um, so that's my, that's one of my biggest goals is to, to be a lawmaker in, California, um, hopefully just to switch some stuff around, you know, maybe I'll become vice president like Kamala Harris, maybe a little bit better, but who knows, but that's my, my major goal. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Uh, Denzel. Uh, yeah, so uh, I transferred to Sacramento State in the fall in August. So I am a psych and social major, psychology and sociology. So my goal is to um, major in school psychology and minor in African studies. And my goal is to uh, help navigate black students so they don't get put in the special ed program on IEPs. And hmm. uh, also hopefully teach African-American history on a, at a college level and then maybe hopefully figure out how to do therapy so that I can heal the trauma, the generational trauma within our people. Wow. We call Very him no Dr. Denzel. Dr. Very Denzel. Noble. Very noble. Cameron? Then you use um, um, My future, um, I'm going to St. Mary's College in the fall. Um, I'm transferring for Chabot, um, where I plan to double major in business and communications. Um, also plan on growing my um, podcast and sports page, uh, Stadium Chatter, while I'm doing that. And after I finish my bachelor's, I plan on going to law school also. You know, the great thing is you got a foundation. You got a wonderful foundation poured into you by Umoja. Um, it's just great to hear your stories. Uh, great to see your future. Um, but this is what we want. This is, all, this is all we do this work for. We do, this is all we do it for, these stories, right? Uh, we get enough of the other stories, <laughs> you know, and we don't like those stories. Um, but we do this so we can hear what you said, you know, to uplift and have you move forward, uh, not to fall into the traps out there. Uh, and just hearing about this program is, is, is I, and I knew a lot, but I know a whole lot more now. And to, 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 to Dr. Mays and to, Jerry Marshall, uh, just thank you for doing what you do. It is that simple. Um, I'm gonna give you guys the last word, but I, if, I couldn't go through the whole program without saying something about my baby brother. Please, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> gotta do it. I mean, I, just, I have seen him grow into the man that he is now. Um, the, the, the cute little story, you know, I'm the oldest and he's the baby. And so I was the first one to play basketball. And I used to play with him in the backyard when we grew up in, in Los Angeles. And I went away to college and I came back 
and he ran rings around me and he's been running rings around me ever since. <laughs> 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 the best athlete in the family. But but more importantly, to see to see him continue his growth, uh, do what he's doing now, I couldn't be prouder be prouder of him. And uh, you know, the same with you, Judy. We couldn't both ladies. Uh, I couldn't be prouder of what you guys are doing for our young people. Um, one of the coachisms we have from our elder coach Wilbur Jiggs is, "You can't raise the children; then what else matters?" And that's, that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. you know, young people get it right; everything's fine. Uh, Things can go on and continue and be in harmony and, and, and peace. Uh, and it's a lot to anybody that steps into a place where they want to do that for people, uh, you know, that's the ancestors' work. So I want to say that to both of you and thank you. And you two get the last word. <laughs> Dr. Mays. Oh, hey, I'm just uh, thrilled that you chose to invite us and you know, spread the word more about, you know, what we're doing here in California community colleges with Umoja programs up and down the state. It's nice to be part of a network. And, you know, this actually, it's just like a wonderful community. I'm a coordinator of a, pro a program on my campus. And then I've got, you know, other coordinators in our region that I, that I reach out to and work with. And, um, you know, it's just, it's an honor to serve our students and to, in, to help them in, in their journey uh, through community college. So I, I don't take that lightly. I, I love the work and I, I love my students. <laughs> Jerry? And same, uh, I love my students and all the things that we do, but I, I'm one who has, when Dr. Marshall asks about what do you want to do in the future, right? I, I have radical imagination. <laughs> I see my students one day coming back and, you know, we have now UU, Emoja okay. University, radical transformation of education where you are going all over the world to learn so you have the ability to change the world. So think big and be radical in all your approaches on changing this institution and changing your lives and the lives of others. So thank you, Dr. Marshall. I appreciate you having us on the show just so we can talk a little bit about the Emoja Community Education Foundation and our mission to continue to serve our students. Well, if people ain't convinced, then they, they I don't know what's wrong with them. <laughs> Based on what you heard tonight, it is wonderful. Lady Estella, you there? I see you. You own, you own, you know, and she gone. Oh, there she is. There she is. Getting ready to wrap up. Anything you want to say? <laughs> Take us out. Excuse me for coughing and choking. And you know how it happens sometimes. Sometimes things just don't work right. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I'm pretty choked up. And I just want to celebrate you, acknowledge you, cheer you on in the work that you do with the love that you have for your children, for your young people, for the people that are sent to you, for the lives that you touch. And I just, my prayer for you and for all those that are in charge is that they are able, they are given the wisdom, the power, the grace to do this work, to touch and change lives. And for the young people who come to you, the young people, the people, it doesn't matter what age, because just like, my, my, the mom here, she doesn't know my story, but I was 40 sitting in the classroom with a bunch of 20 year olds too. I know what that feels like. And they like, what? You mean you didn't? Yeah, I'm here. You know, <laughs> you, just, you just don't know, but I just want to share with you. Thank you, God. I, for, I forgot what I was going to say. I was getting, getting choked. That you are right where you are supposed to be, Cameron. You are right where you're supposed to be. Sometimes we look around and we compare ourselves to what others are doing and we decide we're not doing it right. There must be something wrong because it's not following the plan that I have for me. But you got to know that you are in the hands of somebody who holds the whole world. And that plan for you is better than any plan you can make for yourself. You just keep doing the work. You work hard. 
You set your standards high. You follow the guidance that you've been given. Listen to the inside. And when you are surrounded on the outside with people who were cheering you on and said, all right, brother, this is what you need to do. Listen, keep going, trust that. We don't make mistakes. So for those of you who are open and willing to hear, to listen and do the work, magic is happening. You just trust that and keep going. And so, yes, I like that radical, that radical imagination. The Umoja University, something that touches and reaches every part of the world. But if it's touching and reaching every part of you, then guess what? You will change the world. That's happening. So blessings to you, your work, all that you've done, and all that you're gonna do. Amen. Amen. I say <laughs> thank you. I say thank you very much. It was mm -hmm. awesome. <laughs> thank you for joining us. We're gonna let you go. Um, and but we'll, you know, our paths will cross again. That's how it is. That's how this how this thing works. We're now related. We're all family, and you know, you got us whenever you need us. Um, we got you back, and uh, keep on keeping on. Thank you. Okay. Right. Thank, you much. <laughs> Thank you, Denzel. Bye. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. Thank you for having Thank me. Bye. -bye. Sure Good thing, Ramelia. Okay. Thank you. Love you okay. all. Good night. Good night. <laughs>